Small bowel obstruction occurs when there is blockage of the small intestine, causing the bowel before the blockage to dilate. This can be caused by scar tissue in the abdomen called adhesions, hernias which occur when the bowel passes into places that it should not be, or masses related to benign or cancerous tumors. Patients with small bowel obstruction typically present with nausea, vomiting, and abdominal pain. There are many risk factors for small bowel obstruction, but the most common causes are adhesions related to prior abdominal surgery. The role of CT in these cases is to identify the cause of obstruction and to look for complications such as restricted blood supply or a perforation that might require urgent surgery. Ultimately, many of these patients can be successfully managed non-operatively with a nasogastric tube. The tube goes from the nose to the stomach to remove excess fluid, giving the bowel a chance to rest. More severe or complex cases may require surgery, and for this reason, every case requires a thorough imaging review to avoid delays in care. Let's start with a diagnosis of a typical small bowel obstruction caused by adhesive disease. There are three key imaging findings that will help you make this diagnosis. First, the presence of dilated, fluid-filled loops of small bowel. The degree of dilation can vary based on the severity and acuity of the obstruction, but in general, when the small bowel loops measure greater than 2.5 to 3 centimeters, an obstruction becomes likely. It is helpful to remember that normal small bowel may have some fluid or even a slightly dilated loop or two, but normal small bowel does not have that tense, crowded appearance of many dilated loops as seen with an obstruction. Second, as you are following the dilated small bowel loops through the abdomen, look for tapering or angulation which indicates the transition point, where the small bowel transitions from dilated obstructed loops to normal decompressed loops. Identifying the transition point and carefully evaluating this area will help you determine the cause of the obstruction, whether it is adhesions or a more complex cause such as a mass, hernia, or closed loop. The third common finding in small bowel obstruction is fecalization. This refers to the contents of the small bowel taking on the appearance of stool or feces characterized by little black dots of air. Normally, the contents of the small bowel are fluid-like, with feces only arising in the colon. Fecalization normally occurs right before the transition point and thus can help direct you to the cause of obstruction. Fecalization occurs here because the bowel contents have sat there the longest and over time the water content becomes resorbed, causing it to take on the appearance of stool. Recall that adhesions are the most common cause of obstruction, but these are not visible on CT. You will have to rely on the dilated small bowel, angled or tapered transition point, and fecalized contents to help you infer their presence. Let's review this case and put our diagnostic skills into practice. Starting with the stomach, it is distended with food, oral contrast, and air. As we continue to scroll through the rest of the abdomen, it is distended with multiple dilated fluid-filled loops of small bowel. We'll continue to scroll into the pelvis and try to find a transition point. Here in the pelvis, we can notice that the contents of the small bowel changes from fluid and now has dots of air within it, indicating fecalization. Let's continue to follow this loop a fecalized small bowel and see if it leads us to the transition point. Here in the right lower quadrant, there is a transition from dilated small bowel to distal decompressed small bowel, indicating the transition point. So I hope you liked this video. Absolutely make sure to check out the course this video was taken from and to register for a free trial account which will give you access to selected chapters of the course. If you want to learn how Met Mastery can help you become a great clinician, make sure to watch the About Met Mastery video. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.